All right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. In this episode, I'm joined by Anastasia. In this lifetime, she has a bachelor in philosophy and a master's in classical languages and liter literature. She's been in the technology in industry as a software engineer and technical writer since the 90s and still works in that industry today. Guided by Source Energy, she also works with people to guide them on a path to greater clarity, well-being, awareness, and a higher level of consciousness through energetic dialogue. I discovered her Twitter X account and was really captivated by her intelligent, deep, and thought-provoking posts about reality, consciousness, manifestation, and Bitcoin. So I'm super excited to talk with her today on her first podcast ever. So uh, welcome, Anastasia. Yeah, I'm super happy you you wanted to come on. I uh, um, also love that uh, first you were a bit more anonymous, now a bit less less anonymous. I think that takes uh, that takes some courage. So thank you. Um, I, well, it's true. You know, I uh, before we start recording, I, I I shared with you. You know, like I always prep a bit, and although I do have some things written down, I just want to go with the flow. I don't know where this is gonna go. I think you don't know where this is gonna go. So that's great. But I wanted to start by reading one of your tweets. I think my favorite tweet that, that I've seen from you. And uh, I think then, then we can kick it off. But I'll first read it. So you posted, when you buy your first Bitcoin or your first fraction of a Bitcoin, you are turning on all the lights in a house that has been dark for thousands of years. The more you learn about Bitcoin, the more you learn about fiat, and the more you learn about how that fiat system has impacted not only your life, but the life of everyone in the world, both past and future. As you question deeper into the truth, the light expands into subterranean passages, places that haven't seen the light of day for centuries. You begin to learn why you are here on this planet, why you might have suffered or watched others suffer, and why you had this or that experience. Things start to make sense. Many people are here at this time on this planet to experience this great awakening. If you understand what I'm saying here, you know already that you are one of those people. Nothing but magic and mystery remains ahead. A volatile experience of both joy, awe, and wonder. I just wanted to ask, how does this come to you? It's funny. It's bringing tears to my eyes because I don't remember writing it. Um, <laughs> this is how I love it comes. that. <laughs> it's how yeah. it's always come to me. Um, I am. And this is hard for me right now. This is the biggest challenge for me is to be who I am in the world. And Bitcoin has given me mm. the opportunity to do that. And I'm very psychically gifted. I'm very connected to um, the messages that, that, that are constantly being um, transmitted throughout the, uh, the biosphere or the, 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 the energy that I call Aether. Um, mm -hmm. It's like a network. And I just receive um this wisdom that just comes through me and i've had that for since i was really young and i used to write tons of poetry um that's why i was moved to study philosophy plato in particular and i remember the first day i i read plato in boston in like 1989 in a kitchen with like roaches in it because <laughs> it was like it was a it was a house i was sharing with some of my friends and i was reading for the first time, a platonic dialogue and this lightning went through me and I was literally born again that day. Um, something awakened in me and it wasn't as if uh, everything was solved and my problems were solved and things were easy from that point on. They became very challenging. And uh, I, I've been under I've been going through an awakening process for a very long time. And so but my writing was a way that I could connect to source and receive information that I didn't even have any means of getting in terms of, you know, acquiring through knowledge or data. Like I'm not an expert on Bitcoin and there's a lot of things I'm not an expert on, but I would receive this information in a really powerful way. Um, and yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a topic that I'm deeply interested in. I'd say I um when when you say like sometimes something comes to you I think it's interesting I 
I feel like I'm a lo- I'm a I'm a, like a rational thinker. Like I like to think about things, and I like to like think. Well, you know, the topic is Bitcoin in this case, right? But sometimes mm. there are like these thoughts, and I feel like they are new and interesting, mm-hmm. but I cannot really lean into them. And I f- I hear you talk, and I feel like, do you lean into it, or or it it actually comes to you? Is that is that what you describe? It it comes to me. <laughs> it's um, it really does, and it's. I just start typing or writing, and um, I can see the connections of all things. When I say all things, so I'm just I'm using the only word I have to say it. Um, it's a connection to the whole, and what is meant by that is the whole is not a sum of the parts. Right. It's not like, uh, you know, the pie, the pizza and then the pieces of the pizza. (laughs) But it's it's a different level of connecting to the world and to ourselves beyond the physical 3D, which understands pieces and holes like that. Um, It's more of a fractal thing. So the, the, the idea that within a drop of rain is an ocean or so. Yeah. The soul that we have contains the whole universe. Um, yeah. And then people might go, well, what the heck does that mean? And how would that even be useful? <laughs> you know, is that going to advance my career and, and so forth and so on? But um, we're, what we're talking about here is on a, there's two different ways of looking at the world. One is, you know, what's in it for me? Uh, what's my life? goals what is my career goals what do i want to get from it and then there's the question of who we are and they're completely yeah. completely different and this this is a for every individual there is this tension between those two not that everyone's necessarily aware of that tension at all does that make sense if i if i don't make sense I, let me know yes <laughs> yeah okay it, it does make sense <laughs> okay it, it makes sense for me i i i feel you you are uh further along in this than I am. So I, I feel I feel like a student, but what I think what you you are saying is, you know, the the who we really are is is our is is on the inside and, and what we are doing and what what our career is and all these things, you know, that is on the outside. I think that is also why I said, you know, in this lifetime you have a bachelor's, <laughs> you know, I think um the for me, kind of like the question, and this is how I always think about, you know, when you think about ancient mm-hmm. civilizations or whatever, you know, at the moment that they had food and shelter, what do you think the first thing is that they did? I sometimes ask people and then people say, oh, yeah, I, I don't know. And and my answer is always like, yeah, they probably looked up and thought like, what the hell is going on here? Like, what, <laughs> what, like, what am I? Where, where do I come from? You know, and... That was kind of my thread of going into this studying this subject, and I I do understand what you're saying, you know, about the the all. I think that uh, for me that comes from like the the Kibalion or like the Hermetic principles, yeah. like yes, <laughs> the, you know, the all is mind, the mind is all, mm-hmm. um, and. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking. I love that you also mentioned the fractals. That is like one of the pieces that I'm thinking about a lot. You know, that is the as above, yeah. so below. I think I talk about the ego know, the, a lot because the ego the, the is the fact what, that yeah 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 that that shields us from that. From oh, go ahead. That. Yeah. So, in fact, I did a post today about that. So, the, there's a veil which is in classical philosophy and in Indian philosophy is called. I mean, in many philosophies, in many religions, it's called Maya or the illusion, right? And the illusion is the yeah. the 3D world of perception, the the senses, the eyes, the ears, the nose, and all that, the touch. And we think that that's the reality, right? And the, that is the veil, that is the Maya. Okay, so um, in some ways, you can call 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 it the ego. The ego being identify with what I perceive to be myself. And then we live inside of that. And that's okay, because that's the way it was supposed to be. That's the way it was designed. All right. And that leads to like, why is that the case? There's a lot of these questions 
that could we could we could spend hours and hours and hours just going into all of this. So, so I'm trying to be very succinct here, which is not one of my fortes. So, but the ego is like yeah. you know Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty, you know, sat on the wall. I always use that image. Humpty Dumpty mm-hmm. sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And when the ego breaks, you cannot put him back together again. So the ego, mm. that's, uh, once it, and, and I, I wrote this too, if you try to break it too quickly, that causes issues as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people out there who want to be spiritually aware. And so they do a lot of things to try to make it happen. But that will, that will, that's another lesson that we have to learn the hard way about that if you break through that egg or that veil that there's a lot of a lot of things you may not be ready to handle and so it can create cause psychotic breaks uh things like that mm. um and i've seen it before does your bitcoin custody setup keep you up at night gain peace of mind with onramp and their multi-institution custody solution onramp creates a dedicated multi-signature vault for you and three separate institutions each hold a key which are onramp Bitco and coin cover. But none of them can move funds unilaterally, only you have control. These institutions can only sign with your instruction. OnRamp's multi institution custody eliminates single points of failure, reduces your personal attack service and technical burden, and provides access to financial services that allow you to secure your Bitcoin, including inheritance planning, insurance backed warranties for all balances and transactions, low cost trading, and more. Check out onrampbitcoin.com through my link in the description below and receive $250 in Bitcoin when you join. If you want to self-custody your Bitcoin stack, I recommend the Foundation Passport, a premium Bitcoin-only hardware wallet. I've been using mine for about a year now and I love the design and ease of use. And with Foundation's mobile wallet companion app Envoy, your initial onboarding is super smooth and straightforward. The Passport is fully air-gapped, which means you never have to connect it to the internet or any computer. The Passport serves as a signing device to sign transactions on your Envoy app or any of your other favorite software wallets like Sparrow or Blue Wallet. The Foundation Passport also offers encrypted backups on a microSD card and is built with 100% open source hardware and software. I love what Zach and the team at Foundation are building and to learn more about their mission, please check out episode 27 of this podcast. If you consider buying a Foundation Passport, you can use code BRAM, that's B-R-A-M, to get $10 off at foundation.xyz slash BRAM. It's very interesting that you mentioned that, because uh, I, I bought this book. You know this book? From Itzhak Bentov. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't it's know. called okay. Stalk, Stalking the Wild Pendulum. Uh-huh. And he mentions this in a, he's a, I don't know if he's still alive, but I watched a lecture from him, I think from the seventies. And he talks about this when, when the, when the awakening uh, goes too fast, that people have uh, a psychotic breakdown because they cannot handle that the new paradigm that they see. And they also cannot go back because they know that that is not who they are, right? I think that's the center of what you were saying. Like the the ego is not who we are. That's what right. we created for ourselves. And it's very hard because in this particular age that we live in, this particular part of the, the game that we live in is everybody is very much absorbed in the mind and the body. We are very much as a collective, just stuck in the head most of the time. And um, there's a detachment from um, our bodies. Um, And you hear that a lot. Like people say, I leave my body or I go into some kind of psychedelic space or even in dreams, I leave my body and stuff like that. And that is not that is not what happens when you have a healthy awakening. You actually connect more to your body, more profoundly to your body than you did before your awakening. And. By the way, anything that I'm saying, I I had a lot of experience in these, <laughs> in, in in traversing the power of the mind because I spent most of my previous life in it. So, um, and when you spend the time in your mind, you can even um, have spiritual experiences, and then you analyze them and try to figure them out. And you're like, well, I got to go figure all this out, and I got to. 
go read a book and do this and do this and do this and make make you know plans right i gotta, I gotta go make plans and i gotta i gotta eat yeah. certain things and i gotta dress a certain way and i and i gotta practice this and practice no 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 that's just too much see that's this is the hard thing as a spiritual advisor that i've worked i've been doing this for on and off for you know a good amount of time is that's always been my greatest challenge is to how can I assist people in breaking out of that? They make it way too hard than they have to. And um, so, yeah. Yeah. So do you mean then by uh, like sometimes people talk about eating certain foods or wearing, you know, uh, not not wearing clothes with elastic stuff in it? Is that <laughs> is that what you mean? Is that kind could, of like... It could be. It's, what it's usually more around the, the, I need to understand these particular concepts and I need to meditate more. And I, hmm. I need to like, maybe I'll go try some drugs so it can help me connect and have... You know, or I need to go read the book from this person and this person and this person. And we can live in this whole... It's a mind space is what it is. And I'm not, I'm not saying that learning stuff is bad at all you know it helps us connect but there's an excessive obsession with it when really what we're here is to become conscious of who we are i am you i can't as someone i work with people when i work with people i become a mirror that's why i never know what's going to happen <laughs> and it's yeah i've had to work to get out of the way completely so i've done a lot of shedding of layers and layers of ego that i mean the littlest thing like when i'm pouring a cup of coffee i'm thinking about because i want to sit down and i don't know cry about something you know <laughs> whatever that happened today with a friend or whatever and i and i could see the ego playing in that and then i need to release it over and over again until i'm nothing but a clear pool of water so that when i come to a client and they want and I can help them see. I can't, if I'm not a clear pool of water, then I can't hear them. And I can't hear the energies around them. And um, I can't really be much of much use, right? So the ego gets in the way of communication. So, um, yeah. and when you clear out that ego, um, you start to hear things about the world. And that's when I was, that's when you clear out the plumbing. I know to clear out the plumbing. You start to hear things that are, or see things that um, you wouldn't have necessarily been able to see in the physical world. So, for example, Bitcoin. You know, like yeah, I I never read a book about Bitcoin. I didn't know anything about it. I just moved from Australia. I came here to the states. And I'm like, wow, things got expensive here. <laughs> they were expensive there, but now they're expensive here. And yeah. um, I listened, I forgot, I was listening to some podcast from some guy, I don't even remember his name, and he talked about Ethereum. And I'm like, okay, I'll buy some of that. So I bought it. But then I shortly later, I don't know, uh, I think I was like kind of playing around with the shit coins and stuff like that. Like I was searching around and I started to look. And then I discovered Bitcoin. It's like, I don't want to buy that, but I did. <laughs> and this is, this is a constant, this is, something was like, buy it. So I bought it. I sold all my ETH. I bought all of it. And I just held it. And I just held it. And I knew I needed to keep collecting that. And I just kind of got rid of the, the other coins. But um, I put it away for a while. I was doing spiritual work and stuff like that. I was doing Reiki. I was um, doing healing work. Um, I was in that world and it wasn't until the past year where I returned and I was looking at, I was hearing the Bitcoin, I was hearing the vision. So you clear mm. out the ego without how does it benefit me and whether or not it's going up or down and all that. And I could see what it was all about. Um, you know, is it Max Kaiser talks a lot about Bitcoin being God and you know, and people laugh at him. I see that they get mad. They get really mad. And I understand what he's trying to say, you know, because 
in order to do the same thing different, in order to do the same thing powerfully, we have to do it differently. And at the end of the day, what is fundamentally a ride with fiat is fiat is more than just a financial um, system that is oppressing people financially. It oppresses us in ways that uh, people can't even imagine, like in their love relationships, in their family relationships, in their relationships to themselves, how this money system, which is how we value ourselves. Because if I ask you, hey, I want to sell you this thing and um, the service that I have, well, you're going to pay me what you think it's worth, right? So yeah. money is the way we exchange energy, right? It should be the way we exchange energy and it should Energy, it doesn't, it doesn't disappear, right? Energy transforms into, yes. right? But it doesn't, isn't ever really destroyed. And so the money needs to reflect that if it's going to be sound money somehow, right? But fiat isn't like that. Fiat actually takes your, you do your energy, I exchange with you. And then over even the period of five years or 10 years, I don't have it anymore. So we live in a fake world of everything is lacking. Everything's falling apart. You're getting smaller. I'm getting old. <laughs> my money's shrinking. My, my yeah. body's shrinking. Everything is leading to nothing in the fiat world. And, um, and, it, and it affects how we love ourselves because when we're in the ego and we're feeling this way where nothing I do matters. So why work? Why even do anything? My money's going nowhere. And a lot of people feel that way. And so you can see how that impacts what we create, the quality of buildings that we have, the quality of when you go to the grocery store and the, the energy of the workers around you. So it's connected to how we love life, how we love ourselves, how we relate to other people in general when we wake up in the morning and feel that way, right? Um, the message of Jesus is love, right? Yeah. And um, how can you wake up or begin to wake up a society that is being destroyed by the money. Obviously, everybody's aware of it, right? Money's a big thing for everybody. Bitcoin is love, right? At the end of the day, because it is allowing us to finally um, exchange our energy for something that isn't going to destroy us and is equivalent to it, that reflects who we are as far as, you know, I wouldn't go so far as saying that Bitcoin is God itself. <laughs> that's objective. It's, that's objective. But I would say that it is an expression mm. of God because it will allow us, if it is, if we continue on the timeline of this is going to be adopted, everyone's going to be using this, that we will be free and excited about creating an amazing world. Okay. Okay. And this has happened yeah. before. Yeah. So in a different lifetime, and this is getting a little woo-woo for me for some people, but um, there are civilizations in the past that have already uh, already knew about this. Aether, the free energy. Tesla Tesla tapped, tapped into this too, and they did. They destroyed him. They destroyed his work. They did not want him to um, surface or be a part of this so civilization. Uh, but yeah. Uh, the energy is abundant. Our energy is abundant. Love is abundant. And um, Bitcoin can, is as a way to anchor into this fiat system and pull us out if we choose, right? <laughs> if we choose. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. I, um, I agree. I think uh, what I talk about a lot is, is, this first is energy part, right? If I expend my finite energy and you give me a reward that can be infinitely created, then that is a very bad trade. But because it's infinitely created, it also loses value over time. So I give my most precious asset away and eventually my the reward I get for it deteriorates. And therefore... And this is interesting because my ego finds it hard to use the word stolen, but it's the it's the truth, right? Like through the use through the use of 
fiat money as a reward for expending our energy, we are stealing from ourselves and other people are profiting from it. And because that is happening, you see that that the ego is connected to the money that we use to <laughs> reward yes. our energy, right? And because that money is so broken, it slowly breaks. Well, not maybe it doesn't even break our ego. It makes the ego stronger, right? Because people attach themselves to things that they can buy or or gamble on with money whereas and i think that's where the love part comes in that's not the 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 point of life you know the 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 people that came way before us were not captivated (laughs) by the latest playstation 5 or whatever something else right and and so the entire habit of consuming and consuming and consuming is is entirely anti human i would say i think what is more human is building 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 and progression and you know continuing our path they're running on fear right it's fear and desire always in the markets yeah even the markets themselves are reflecting that and uh it makes it because everyone is afraid and empty and there's nothing more terrifying than emptiness to a human being emptiness being something like death and so that's why during the depression you had people throwing them out of window throwing themselves out of windows when they lost everything right um and because we take the ego and we're in our ego we, it it means something it's it it's important you know you can say well it's just money but but it's all people some so it's, it's all they feel like they have at this point because the fiat system has enslaved us for so long that our sense of worth is now measured even by ourselves in terms of how much money I have, you know, I can't get a girlfriend because I don't have any money. And, I can, and and this mindset creates that reality too. So that's an important aspect of, um, that I always try to remind people, even though I know they may not like it, is that we do create our own reality. So we can hop on that or not, but we do have the power to choose whether we want to let the fiat yeah. mindset become our creator and create our world or whether we want something different. And sometimes like there was a gentleman on Twitter who wrote, he was, he's an amazing writer. He, he writes these most amazing little bits about himself because he was a, he had a history, a young man history of being in jail and, and stuff. And he, he's got so many gifts, such beauty, such, such passion for life that's been kept back. Because some, so a lot of the people who are most kept back in this kind of fiat society are the people who have the most gift, most to give, most ready to give, right? Because it's that mm. um, um, they don't want you to, they want to control love. And they, so they do it by controlling the money because they can't control love, can't control love, right? So let's control it. And so let's, let's create a society that where everything is under control and everything that the public learns is something that we decided that they should learn and everything we don't think they should learn. Well, we'll, we'll make sure they don't learn it. And they think it's, they'll we'll make sure that they're, they're making fun of it. I mean, you can see that in terms of what happened with COVID and with today's media, it's so easy to do that <laughs> It's with the, the internet and people are just their heads glued in. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, I, I like what you said about, you know, we are also, and I wanted to talk about manifestation, but oh. we are keeping this also alive, right? I mean, this is uh, you, the, the, the post that I read from you, you know, mm-hmm. you, where you say the light expands into subterranean passages. Yes. I, I was thinking of the allegory of the cave in that yes. sense, right? Like that yeah. is that is kind of like the old school matri- the, the matrix, right? Yeah. Once you, once you see outside of the cave, you cannot, you you cannot put that understanding back in a jar again and go sit in the cave again next to the other people, right? Or like well, well, as you, in the Matrix do. movie, you, <laughs> you do. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, but I mean, you you I, do, you do. That's a good point. Well, <laughs> once you see that other, other. No, I know what you're saying. You're I saying don't know if what... reality is the right word, right? Yes. 
you're, you're just well, saying once that you once see you... it, you cannot unsee yes, it. Yes, yes, right. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so you have a conscious decision to make, like, am I going to ignore this or am, am I going to adopt it or do something about it or, or you know, change this, this old well, paradigm? But I li- what I like about the allegory of the cave is you cannot change the old paradigm. You cannot change the cave. You know, it's the, the entire story is about that. You know, the guy goes back into the cave and says, like, hey, there's like all this, you know, there's nothing going on outside of the cave. You know, there's lovely sun and all these things. And they they think he's crazy. Right. And so I think that is what we need to realize that the the other people are also keeping the cave alive <laughs> because they yeah. are not stepping out of, of the cave. We We cannot pull them out. And they're not supposed to necessarily come out. And that's the interesting part is that at the end of that uh, image is Plato's most famous allegory um, of what earth education is. And Plato, when the, when the, the, he calls him the philosopher, the philosopher is a lover of wisdom. It's not, it's not, it's not um, a sophist or anything like that. It's not what we think of as a philosopher today. Philosopher is more like a, Mm. like I would say an enlightened person comes out of the cave in the form of Socrates comes out of the cave and it's, not every case to go back into the cave to help others is the ultimate in divine service to help them come out of the cave. And when you come out of the cave, so to speak, you realize, and, and Plato points to the sun as, because that has been, that is the, the light that we hold. Uh, there is nothing beyond being that light that is required. So there's nothing to do. And um, it's hard to understand that because most people, well, you know, if I want to be rich or I want to be abundant or have a wonderful life, I'm going to have to do all this stuff. And it's like, nope, you really don't. Um, Like you said before, when we started this conversation, you're like, does this stuff come to you or do you have to kind of lean into it? And and I'm like, well, there was a time when I used to lean into lots of things and they never worked very well. I mean, they kind of sometimes did, <laughs> but then they would kind of not go the way I thought I like they'd that. go. But when you let go of that, and this is the, the thing about trust, you know, like trusting in the divine, you let go of that, it starts coming in. Because what you want, what you want in your deepest heart is already who you are. It's already there for you. But yeah. that's, and it, the earth education, the idea of the cave is that we are here on earth to experience maya the illusion right not manipulation that's a different manipulation i call the fiat matrix like a virus and that's a whole different realm of interesting conversation but the way it's set up is that we're supposed to experience this maya in our ego and learn how to love and learn about desire and learn about fear so we can learn how to be creators in this universe on levels yeah. that we can't even imagine, right? Now, yeah. who are the beings that would want to keep the gods under the earth suppressed, needy, and thinking that they're ants? You know, there is literature, Hesiod's Theogony. I encourage people to go read that if they can get a hold of it. It's a very strange document, and it talks about how Zeus pushed all the monsters down and underneath the earth and hid them there. I'm just going to leave it there with that. That's a whole other conversation. But yeah. um, that is what they do to us. They, they, li- they literally, we are extraordinarily powerful and they use our own energy to destroy us and attack ourselves. It's like cancer. Cancer, your cells are destroying it's, itself, yeah. right? And um, I had cancer at one time. And... Um, and it's the same psychically. So phys- the physical world, the psychic world, the mental world, the emotional world, they're all, uh, they all reflect each other. And uh, once it gets to the physical cancer, you're, you've really taken on, <laughs> you've really manifested. Yeah. So we manifest our own diseases. But it, it doesn't mean that, okay, I manifest my own disease now so I can take it out. No, it's not that. There's a lot of work to be done to do that. But- 
And so is is the goal then when you when you mention like you get outside of the cave and you see the sun and and you said like people think like oh I need to do all these things I wanted to ask like isn't isn't then the goal to just truly acknowledge the sun and and therefore uh, when you mentioned like what you are here to do or what you want is already inside of you isn't that like the same mechanism like the the goal is to just truly accept that and that is what is freeing yeah it's it's a metaphor though the sun right physical sun yeah. so it's but you start to feel um it 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 it, it, it is a light in, in in that sense it's a light of consciousness because when you turn a light on you start to see everything right yeah right so your consciousness starts to see everything it didn't see before. That's what it feels like. And much of, in fact, most of the things you don't like about yourself, the things that bother you, the things that like, oh, you know, if I was more this way, people would like me more, or I'd be more successful, or I wish I, whatever. But you know what? Look at those things you're complaining about, because I'm telling you, the things that you're complaining about are the very treasures you have. They are your gifts. But you're trying to fit, you know, into something that isn't you, you at all. And when you do that, that's when you get really hard on yourself and you, and you start to feel like, you know, why isn't Bitcoin moving? I should be more successful. I lost, you know, it's all, uh, there's all kinds of things. And of course, it, it's like you, there's so much uncertainty and distrust in yourself and that everything else kind of follows from there. But when you do start to practice um, letting go of the ego, shedding the ego, letting starting to watch instead of react. That's the beginning process. You can start to help the awakening happen so that you can step into who you are. Right. And that's, that's my, I've learned that over this time, that's my purpose on earth right now is to help and assist people to uncover their treasure, their gift, who they are. Right. Yeah. It's not out there. Right. But once you do find that, Everything you ever wanted starts coming in rapidly. You know, it's like if if you wanted a you know wealth or love or whatever it is, it starts coming in like crazy. And by the time it comes in, you don't even care anymore on a certain level. You're like, well, I just like this. I like being alive. I don't. It's great that I have all those things I thought I wanted. Awesome, great. If I lose them, doesn't matter anymore. They, that's what happens. It's. Mm. I I I love that I love that you say that because I um I I I also once learned that like these th the things that you don't like about yourself are like the outcome of or the result of you know the patterns that you have or how you constructed yourself right but there's always a a bad and a good side to it but but most people le lean into the the bad side and they think like well why like for example i know that i'm a bit of a control freak <laughs> you know and uh we all. when i w well yes but uh, i that's true but <laughs> but i years ago i i i focused on the negative part of that a lot you know but the positive part you know so i would be like oh there was opportunities i missed or uh, things mm -hmm. i didn't dare to do or something like that but the other side of of one in control is to also be structured and diligent. And, um, you know, I think also through Bitcoin, I learned that I can trust my own uh, research and judgment and reflection, you know. And uh, I, I think I, I love that you said that because eventually, um, and I also love that you found and discovered what, what you are here to do. I think. And it's funny now that we're talking, I'm, I'm, I'm reflecting on it, but I've had a lot of people tell me that I'm, uh, I'm like someone who has like the flashlight in the dark and, and showing other people what else is there. And I feel like doing a podcast like this is a part of, of being that, right? The entire goal is to reach more people and tell them about what this, what this Bitcoin thing is, but until you know, I'm doing this for almost a year, but until we spoke now, I didn't realize that I was doing that. So I think that's funny. 
how that how that works. Yes, yeah, so and where you're being, where you see yourself being controlling, it's always helpful to look and see what you're afraid to get out of control, right? Because mm. that thing you're afraid that's going to get out of control is something that's where this that's where the good stuff is, right? That's what the, you yeah, don't have but, to talk about yeah. it, but that's. That's... Well, I think the funny part there is that I also, when you say that, I think like, yeah, but that, that, that thing that I'm perhaps scared of, like, that's also never going to happen. So it's imaginary, right? I think. <laughs> it, it's, well, you're talking about worry is one thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about here, but. You know, no, I don't know if it's worry, but more like the why do you want to have control? You know, right, right, I, right. There's mm. something. There's something that it's like. For example, you buy a dog, right? You get a dog because you want a companion, yep. and you the first instinct is, well, I got to train this dog. I got to control the dog. I got to. I got to tell him the. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's what everybody does. Everybody does this. Like I got to control the dog. It's simple. I will take him yep. to obedience school, and he'll get a certificate, and he'll be so proud, right? And the dog will go, well, yes, I'm a graduate, so I'm a good boy, <laughs> all right? But, you know, you don't – so here's the thing. So that's fine. That can work. You can have a nice dog, and he's trained. Um, but look at it this way. So this is just dog, tr dog training. But what if you didn't train your dog? Well, I'm afraid he's going to bite someone, or I'm afraid he's going to pee all over the house. He's going to ruin my life, and he's going to be a pain in the neck, and he's going to eat everything. Okay. Um, but control is very different than nurturing, right? Um, controlling is trying to manipulate something to make it do what you want it to do, right? And we do yes. this all day long. It's become the normal way of interacting with everybody. It's like, I got to get my wife to do this because she, you know, so I'll give her this or I'll buy her this or she'll do this. This negotiation everywhere, more fiat stuff, okay? But yeah. What if I told you that all you needed to do was just be with the dog? <laughs> so I have two dogs. You can see behind me I have a giant cage. I have two giant dogs. And um, I don't train them at all. I never formally train them. I communicate with them. It's what uh, on my website I have, you know, energetic dialogue. And I practice that with my animals. And I practice that with people in my life as best I can with two teenage girls. It's like... <laughs> But yeah. um, it's it's being able to it's like gardening. It's like you just need to feel what they need, how they might need to be handled, how you can work with them to get so you can both be happy. My dogs do not. They're Rhodesian Ridgebacks. You cannot you cannot be heavy handed with them. You have to work with them to do what they want to do in the way you want to, to do it. And it's it's a it's a it's a real partnership. And it's a it's a and you and you get a, an amazing connection to your animals, right? Just like with your kids, an amazing connection with your kids. And you don't have to do anything but listen. Listen mm -hmm. and kind of work together in a way that allows them to be happy dogs. And when they are, they, they want to please you. I mean, they're, they look up to you, you know? I, yeah. So control is very different. And when we treat ourselves with control, we... It's not always done with the the proper respect. So, uh, yeah. That. I'm also thinking: Does that have to do? You know, if we go back to fiat money, does does fiat money also give us that illusion of thinking of the the English word like um like manufacturability? Is that the right word? Manufacturability. Like like you know like instead of just being and you know figuring it out as you go. Mm -hmm. I feel like fiat money also gives you that illusion of that manu manufacturability. Like if I have the money, then I can fix this or that, or I can oh. train my dogs or my this or... Oh. But like we can buy ourselves out of being aware. Okay, yeah. So I can buy something that help me do this so I don't have to do it. Like I can hire someone to go, For right? example. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a very good point because um, fiat money has doesn't teach us 
about that this is exchanging. I'm exchanging something that you want, something for I want, and we're doing this energy exchange. There's no honor in it. It's just this no. paper money, right? Exactly. It's like, yes. Well, if I get enough of this money, I can get all the things I want. I can get the women. I can get the boats. I can get the whatever, my big house and all that stuff. And I don't have to do a thing. I don't have to. And that's the same drive that, that with AI is the same kind of drive, right? Is, well, we can have something that does everything. I don't have to do, I don't have to even vacuum. I don't have to cook. I don't have, I'll have a robot cook. I'll, you know, I don't even have to write a letter to my child because chat GPT will do it for me. Um, I don't have to create a website because an AI will do it for me. All of that. That this is a very interesting topic because um, when we're not doing soul exchange, we are mm-hmm. doing soul um, energy being stolen from us. We literally, literally, our energy gets smaller and smaller. So our energetic field is we're giving away power every time. Yes. And that's a can, very good point. Yeah, yeah you, you yeah. give away power, and so as you increasingly give away power. You want more money because you still, you don't have the energy to do things, you know, because it's just, what am I here for? You yeah. know, that movie, what's that movie with a, that Disney or is it Pixar or something with like, you know, those guys, those big fat guys sucking on, you know, candy the Wally, all day. Like, the Wally movie. Yes, the Wally that, movie. yeah, 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 it's exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, or Idiocracy. Have oh, you yeah. seen Idiocracy? Yeah. But I think what you're saying, I, it's funny because I used um, I use outsourcing your responsibilities. That term, I use that a lot. So okay. in Fiat Money, we, we do that a lot. We outsource our responsibilities, even over the most important communication tool that we have, which is money, right? But I think you just said it differently. With, with the, you, you said it with energy, but I think it's yeah. the same, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, you basically because we have fiat money we already outsource our energy yes because again back to the reward if that reward is constantly you know uh created so our energy is is stolen so that is where that starts and that is also i think a good point to make that is why we need to fix the money before we can fix the world this is the origin who else is outsourcing our energy who else is doing that i'm not the united states all the countries mm-hmm. of the world are taking their literally literally yes. doing that and yes. then so this is a fractal thing again it's like what is going on on the grander scales going on within each individual yes right? correct and yeah. and that is the case all and that's where as individuals we get very enraged you know and we project out like Hey, there's a lot of hate for the government right now, which is deserved, yeah. right? But there's not as much reflection about, well, how am I supporting this? And see, that's where, exactly. Bitcoin, that's where Bitcoin comes in. Yes. Because I yes. can say, so well, this, you know what? I'm done. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm opting out. And that's why with my, with my energy work, I do not accept fiat. I will only accept Bitcoin money. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. This is the point. Uh, this is great that we are circling back here because this is what I uh, wanted to say before. That reflection part, as you mentioned, that is uh, when I talked about you know going out of the cave and back, or knowing that you know red pill, blue pill, mm-hmm. uh, the, the 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 stake in the matrix, like that stuff. Like <laughs> if you are, I don't know what the the, the trait is that someone should have or what is necessary for you but once you see outside of you know the you called it the maya or the veil right like if you just have a little peek you still cannot unsee it right Right. and so the that is when you have that choice and you can keep pointing at other people at the world the reality that you know (laughs) you experience but that will keep you stuck Right, so you yes. have to reflect, and that is where the most painful part probably comes in. Yes, and I think that is also why a lot of people talk about Bitcoin being something spiritual. It, it like once you see that we could fix the money, you and and you understand why, then you immediately get confronted with the fact that you are, well, for example, participating in a system that you have no clue about, or you realize that your energy is stolen from you. Like those are not nice realizations to have, 
but yeah. they are necessary for you to take the action to eventually, if you're convinced enough or you see it enough or I don't know, feel it enough mm -hmm. th that you decide to, to opt out of that. And, and because you that is the only, that's the only way. Exactly. And you realize that, like I said before, that we're all in this world together. So yeah, we are all participating together. And so we are all equally responsible for the choices we make because we create the timeline momentum. And um, I wrote a post in response to another post <laughs> the other day that I said that something like, um, we have in the fiat system, we have stolen from our children. Like we have, we have done severe damage to our children because fiat is abusive. And it, you know, it is, a war, it is, and Max Kaiser again, correct, you know, it is the money of war and bloodshed. And it's, yes. it's blood money. And wherever you get it, you're holding it and you're using it. And if you're wanting more of it, then you're, you yeah. don't care where it's coming from. So, and I'm not saying that as accusatory or it's like, it's your fault. It's not about blame. It's, we got to get out it's of the idea and it's about right. responsibility, which is completely different than blame, right? It's yeah. like um, being well, responsible. Once you now know it, right? It's more like once, if, if you see that, you have to start moving. That's kind of what, what you're saying. Yeah. Say. Because most people are, we are raised to not see it, you know, but it, when we talk about this topic, I think uh, it's a very good point when you talk about war, you know, why would someone go to war? Why would they have weapons and rockets and tanks and all these things? Yeah, because other people were paid to create those tools for war. And if you can create your own money by the press of a button, you have the tool to reward other people to make these uh, war tools for you, right? But if there's money that you can not create by the push of a button, you are forced to think about, do I want to go to war? I think that is the, the very old example. I don't know. Someone told me this, I think, on a podcast or I heard it. I think it's a, it's a known example. But like back in the day when two countries would go to war and they would both be, have like, you know, gold as their reserves, there was no money. They had like a set amount of, of soldiers and equipment and all these things. They would, they would go into a battle. But if there was like one moment where like one side um it looked like one side was winning the the rulers would come on the battlefield and they would agree on on ending it because it was the incentive was higher to just be defeated so shake hands on an agreement and you give away some land or whatever than to just totally destroy your entire army of men and equipment and horses and 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 all these things right and currently, it's, that is just not the case. It's totally. It's a the very war is a very strange thing, you know. And uh, you got to ask yourself sometimes, like, well, why are we? Why does war even exist? Right. Yeah. And um, and the best place to look, you know, is to to remember that fiat feeds off our energy, right? It takes us to zero. And this mm. in the physical world, it's the same thing. It's just blood is the is the energy that they feed off of. And it's a form of modern sacrifice. Um, if you read like Pericles' speech to at the Athenians, it's all about sacrifice. It's all about sacrifice to the state. The blood sacrifice creates the momentum required to maintain the power of the rulers. And this is very, this goes back to ancient ritual. And I mean, it's very dark, this stuff, right? And so the war is, on the surface, they put them on the news and there's bad guys and good guys because the, the, most of the people on the planet right now look at things like a game. It's the same with the election. It's like, yeah, it's like a movie, yeah. I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like bad guy, good guy, who won? You know, it's just like, it's yeah. all this craziness that goes on, this entertainment. Um, but behind the entertainment is a lot of ritual. And there's a really great website called Vigilant Citizen that I encourage everyone to go check out. Vigilant Citizen, because he talks a lot about, or she, I don't know who it is, but they talk a lot about symbolism in the public. Uh, and so you can kind of explore that area um, that is, you know, we don't need to get into it now, but 
it's it's an interesting aspect of things, but it connects the the fiat system with the rituals, the dark rituals, um, and uh, the feeding off of human life. Um, and in my work, I know I do a lot of entity clearings, and um, you know these things, these things, these beings aren't in the physical world, but they're in other, they're in the, the more energetic sphere outside the outside the three D world. That there's um, beings that do feed off of our energy, um, and so. so- we have- <clears throat> yeah, sorry. There, there's a no. Bit go of ahead. Life. I was I, saying I that you know, as as above, so below. That's that's the rule of the universe. So whatever you see in the physical world is already there in the the yeah. higher. And same with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is not new in terms of um, what its intention is for the human race. In fact, Ford. I think there was an article about Ford uh, talked about energy, money, energy, or energy. Uh, yeah many years ago yeah, so energy money yeah yeah yeah. so it's yeah. manifested today because of the compute power we've got and the computer system and the network um yeah but it's not it's like new it's not new in the sense of um a new idea or something there's a difference between the when you talk about ideas versus physical form right so i you know there's vision there's ideas there's spirit the ideas and you know there's the physical manifestation that's the process of manifestation goes like that so um, yeah, you know, like when I when I write, uh, I only see the energetic. I could barely say form. I don't even know what I'm going to write. I'll, sometimes I'll even start writing something, and then something else comes in, and then it's like, okay, okay, you know, and then it comes in, and then and now it's it's words, you know, and then those words might get someone into action, and then it becomes physical, and it, and if everyone agrees about those words, then. You know, it starts to become part of who we are in a physical way, in a physical form. You see, there's this whole process of things yeah. coming into being. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, uh, I wanted to talk about that because that is what, man- uh, I wanted to say, like, that is what manifestation is. But you just said that, right? Like, that is the, the concept that Henry Ford mentioned and later also Tesla. That mm-hmm. is um, manifested in what, bitcoin is now right but Mm -hmm. how so it was already there because the idea was already there i think that's how you would talk about it right like once the idea is there and but not the 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 physical form right right the manifested form in the physical reality yeah it is already there right because the idea is also a certain certain type of manifestation in another form right Mm -hmm. so the the idea or the concept was already known, but now it's manifested in in this in this physical space. Right. And by us talking about it, and you writing about it, and me talking with other people, we are continuing this path of manifestation, right? Because more people will get in touch with the concept; they will understand the the physical right. manifestation of it, mm-hmm. how it works, the miners. Right, all Sun that. energy, exactly. All all these things. And right? then some people think it's like fiat so, too, so they relate to it that way. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But because they look at it from just a different point of view, right? That's I think what Jeff Booth talks about a lot is they look at it from the old paradigm. Yes, the old paradigm. They look at a new paradigm, exactly. but the, the new paradigm is is growing at its own pace in its own place. It is not within the existing exactly and you know, that's matrix what's ama- paradigm framework. that's what's amazing about it and that's what's opening up the portal to allowing a lot of people to um who weren't able to function in the fiat world very well to start to open up as well so as bitcoin comes in you're going to see more and more people blossom because like i said bitcoin is an expression of love and so a love of ourselves. It's a gift to ourselves. You know, it really is. It really yeah. is a gift to ourselves. But is the biggest, <clears throat> I believe so. Um, I talked a lot about, I think one of the things, so, so before we started recording, you shared with me, you know, the question isn't whether or not Bitcoin is desired by all. It already is. And it's here. The question is whether can we, 
uh, whether we can not only overcome our own doubts and blockages, but whether we are willing to, you know, and that's when it's happening. But I think th that is, you, you hit the nail on the head there in a the sense that I think um, when, when you see a different paradigm, when you take the orange mm -hmm. pill or go out the cave or whatever, and you see that other thing that exists, that is when you are at that, that kind of like fork, fork in the road, right? And that is when you, and I've also experienced this, and, and still I think like so, sometimes when you think about Bitcoin and you think about, okay, if we fix the money, we fix the world and we eventually end up, you know, in a greener, better, healthier, more aware, conscious place, you know, however you want to define it. I think the second thought I I would have when I first think that is like an ego thought, which would be, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> figured it out, right? Or, you know, that's never going to happen. Or I, I don't know, some something like well, that. But I think that is exactly what you mean with your own doubts and blockages and all these things. Like that is why it's a spiritual journey that you also are, I want to say, willing to accept that you are given the gift at this moment in time or your lifetime to experience and right. adopt and educate on like right and, now and we're, in like the, we're in like the honeymoon phase you know it's just like it's so exciting and um when we get to the point where bitcoin is actually part of our life on all levels we won't even talk about it anymore it we will be so much more mm. involved in other things building on top of that um and not just i'm not just talking about bitcoin itself but building lives and relationships that really come from our heart not because, oh, I got to go to my nine to five job and I got to make a lot of money so that I can be a successful person. And I, oh, I hate my job. I wish I could do something else. So maybe I'll, on the weekend, I'll indulge in drugs and do all this, you know, all this stuff. It's, it's such a waste. And um, when the way I see the way this is intended is that, you know, we do eventually get to that point where we don't have to argue about Bitcoin and we don't have to talk about it all the time. And it's just going to be a different world. And it's going to be that for some people, but for some people it may not be. And I'm not saying this is going to happen in our lifetime either <laughs> at all. You know, we might still, you know, I might, by the time I pass away in this body, I'll probably, things might be pretty good on the, on the road getting better, but I'm not, uh, I'm not so sure. Cause it, there's so much uh, stuff to be cleaned up, you know? Uh, I mean, uh, some of mm. us here are here to do that. Like I, I do all kinds of psychopomp work, like which is leading souls into the, to the light back to the source. So there are people who die and they're so lost they don't know where, they don't know where they are, and because uh, we've lost our sense of connection to the earth, and we've lost our sense of connection to all of life, so that we can honor our passing and the transitions and. You know, I think you posted something this morning about that, something about, um, didn't you post something about um, something about the old world, and what we used to build? Um, I don't remember. I just, it's just. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Uh, yeah and, and Wait, I'll read it. I'll read it. Yeah. Um, we have a lot. We have I'm a scrolling. lot. We have a lot to uh, clean up. So. Bitcoin is helping us kind of open the doors yes. we have to walk through. So. I tweeted, yeah, I saw an article which was, uh, an, uh, I saw that someone tweeted an article about, and the, the headline is archaeological evidence of an ethnographically documented Australian Aboriginal ritual dated to the last mm. ice age. And so, and the guy Tweeting said, you know, this is an extraordinary view into the deep time of humanity. The Ice Age remains Ice Age remains of a ritual that was conduct, conducted until the 1800s. These findings represent 500 generations of cultural transmission of an ethnographically documented ritual practice that dates back to the end of the last Ice Age, which is like 14, 15,000 years ago, if I am... Long time. Or is it long? No, I think it's... Uh, yeah, or around that time, right? right? And yeah, so I tweeted, the people way before us knew more about the earth and the universe, where we come from and consciousness. And they also taught each other, apparently, for 500 generations. <laughs> and like, so what are we doing now? And I think that's what you just said. Yeah. We are, we are, 
Oh yeah. Sometimes I use the words like we we are disrespecting our life. <laughs> we we I'm, do. I'm still but doing we're told, it. We're right? taught like, to do that. We're taught to do that. Like if you really start to pay attention. Yes, to it, exactly. To do it. And and you know Plato talks about. But does like, that illustrate how big this? Sorry. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I want I wanted to. Add, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> there's a bit of lag before I get comments on YouTube. Like let her talk. Um, doesn't that illustrate how big this is? This is what I'm getting back to a lot. Like this is a huge spiritual battle. It, it, it is a huge, it is a spiritual battle that I've been going through for five years. It's been intensely, intensely difficult at certain times. It's much easier now, but it was really tough in the beginning. And, um, um, you know, I, I, I also posted, earlier today about quartz, you know, and the Egyptians put quartz in all their buildings for healing so that, you know, when you're in your community and going about your day, you're getting all this quartz energy and quartz energy, extremely healing. Now that doesn't mean that you sit there with a quartz and you're going to be healed in all your diseases. They may, you know, that's, that's not the way it works, but this is a whole, everything we do, everything we build, everything we eat needs to have this for higher vibration. Um, we don't have that right now with our buildings, our buildings are completely, I mean, they're below, like, they're below Minecraft level, in, in my opinion. <laughs> Some of the buildings that we're building today, I mean, I'd rather live in a Minecraft world. It seems like it's got more quartz and stuff in there or something, you know? I mean, I'm making a joke, but um, um, every, this is the thing. Every aspect of our life needs to be attended to. That's what I talk about the whole. Because when you start radiating for the heart, it's like what I eat, the kind of friends I have, how I treat myself, self-talk, all of these things. And you can't tackle all this stuff at the same time because it'll just, you know, it's overwhelming. But you don't need to. Yeah. Once you start to feel the love for yourself, you, it radiates. It's not even love for yourself. It's love for the world. You just naturally are drawn to things that are healthy. You don't even have to read a magazine or a book about how. How many, what different kinds of meat should I eat? And how many this and that? I mean, there's all that kind of stuff. And that's just, you need to learn to listen to our bodies again about mm -hmm. what my body needs right now. You know, sometimes my body needs red meat. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't sit there and try to figure out what's good. There is no good. It's what do I need now? Um, but when we're in a state of deep mind ego, we have no clue. So we need to go look at, find a book to tell us what to do. And we find, okay, I'll, I'll try, try this. Sure. Yeah, I'll try this. I'll, you know, and that's how people are relating to Bitcoin too. Well, I got to go read about Bitcoin to figure it out whether it's good for me. Like, well, this and the pros and cons and da, 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 da. Well, you know, if we had access to our heart, you would know exactly what to do. You would know what to do. It would, you would just know. But that's mm. hard to understand from an egoic perspective, an ego mind perspective, because the ego mind thinks it needs to do infinite research and get infinite amount of information in order to make one decision about something. I imagine. <laughs> I, I once I once read that uh, one of my favorite one of my favorite books is called uh, Untethered Soul. I don't know if you know that book. Um, no. <laughs> I don't read much. But in that in that book, the re, uh, he talks about that we gave our ego the um, unattainable assignment to save us. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, and and I had to think of it because what you said, right? Like, we're going to be like, oh, I want someone else to tell me what to do. <laughs> it's basically, you know, and, but at, at all, at all levels. Right. And I think I'm saying this also uh, laughing because <laughs> I'm also reading someone else's book to tell me that right now, but it's more about, <laughs> I don't know. At least you're processing it. Right. You know, that's yeah, why, yeah, Fro yeah, that's, yeah. Why Freud, I, but, but, that's why Freud said yeah. uh, uh, men want to marry their mother. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, yes my point was that you just need to be aware of it just process that and then just be aware of it and that is just that there's not really um uh how do you say you don't say it's good or bad or whatever it, it, you know it's just what I did right. okay 
you know, it's that, the acknowledgement. Right. In, uh, 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 maybe that's what, but you also mentioned before, just acknowledgement versus the the never ending rabbit hole right. of challenging your and ego I or something. I understand because, you know, the, when I first started, before I woke, I had no idea the difference between what I thought and what my heart was saying. I couldn't. I couldn't, mm. I didn't know. I was getting so many voices, so many, not voices, but more like messages. I just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't hear myself. And that's intentional, by the way. So sh nobody should be hard on themselves about it. Um, with the Wi-Fi, the 5G, all the stuff going on, there is so much information coming, not only in the internet, the phone itself, but in the air. I mean, that stuff comes through the air. Mm. And um, luckily I was able, I can visualize that stuff. It, it's, it's terrible at night. I had to, t it, it kept me up all night at one point, you know, practically because I could see all the transmissions constantly, like the data, like the physical data, the, I, I, I would be woken by uh, a voice wow. that I would hear. Yeah, I mean, it's that creepy, like supernatural stuff, you know what I'm talking about? Um, until I was able to like really understand what the heck was going on. Um, but we're constantly bombarded with all kinds of frequencies um, and they, they come through the TV. As many people know that the frequency through the TV puts you in this like very receptive state. And so when you're sleep, when everyone's sleeping, they become in a highly receptive state. So we're dealing with like kind of form of mass mind control in this respect. And um, it's very hard to hear that inner voice. And most people don't even know what it is anymore. So, so, I work, I work with people to help clear out a lot of that stuff. And it is not easy. I mean, if you look at what plumbers have to clear out of certain things, it's not fun because I literally, I, I will take on stuff for them. You know, I do. Uh, and I will, and it's mm -hmm. fine. I don't have a problem with it because it doesn't, but you know, it's like I have to take it on and clear it out so that they can start to see a little bit of their light. And it literally, you can see it above your head at some point, the light that you are, and it's not in your body <laughs> and you have to bring it in. And it takes time yeah. because you got to, um, um, you got to want to have it in. It's funny that you said before, you know, is that the light shines on everything and guess what you're going to see a freaking mess. <laughs> so a lot of people, don't even want to see it. Yeah. Right? right, right? I don't want to see those roaches and that over yeah, the yeah, crap yeah. over the corner. Well, that's it. Right? So if, if, uh, but that's the resistance, right? Yeah, that's, that's the, the resistance. resistance. So you have to, and to tell you the honest truth, you need some, you do need support from somebody, right? Because, um, it's, it's sometimes, yeah. it's depending on who you are, it can be terrifying for people, really terrifying nightmares. Uh, they start to have, Mm. Um, uh, you know, supernatural experiences and things like that. That can be terrifying to somebody who isn't used to that, right? So these things can happen. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's why that's why there are people, all of us are on here to help each other in different ways. You know, uh, all of us came to Earth right now because Bitcoin is here <laughs> and because of what has been going on. And there is uh, a literal reef configuration of the grid, okay? Like the old grid, the fiat grid is going away and we're, we've are we already built the new one and we're just stepping into it. So that's what I say about trust and the Bitcoin's already here. It is already here. The mindset of you ha might have, might think it's not here yet, what that it is and you can step into that and you can live that life you want to live. Um, it's already there for you right now and i used to have visions yeah. about this like before i even connected it to bitcoin i didn't know what the heck they were showing me but they were showing me the grid and i would see it every night and then they would show this other thing and they were building and then and i'm like what is you know i was like what is this? <laughs> and then all of a sudden things started making sense <laughs> because this this is not a simulation yeah. as I, much as you, right? you just said something right yeah, I was just going to say, this is not a simulation in the sense of an artificial intelligence, but it is the biological uh, grid and a way for us to live inside of our ego, even, that is more conducive to life and our 
expansion, right? There's nothing bad about the ego either. It's just that there's been a there's been entities here that have manipulated people. It's kind of like, you know, hackers, they can hack into the system and they can start messing with it. That's a whole other story. I, I was finally told the whole story about why things are this way, but we don't need to get into that right now. <laughs> it would take another, I don't know, a few well, hours. You, ju you just said to me, like, <laughs> yeah. You just said to me, like, do you know, like, do you know what I mean? And then I thought, no, oh, not exactly, I, but uh, I, I am following, but more like, <laughs> no, I don't. but, but what I do believe is, um, you know, if, if you know that you are not your body, you are not your mind, you are not right. your thoughts, right? Like your, your body, your body, your eyes and your, well, your eyes and your brain are interpreting, yeah. you know, whatever the physical world is is around you mm -hmm. and i do believe that i actually talked about this today with my with my girlfriend like you know dogs can hear certain frequencies that humans don't but for the dogs hearing that frequency it is their reality right so that is also true and that also exists so i do believe that there's people uh or that there are people that can see or hear or feel these other levels of frequency yes. slash vib vibration right yeah. and so no i did not know what you were talking about because i don't have that but I, this is kind of oh. how i view it so yes i do understand what, what yes you, but eventually we will saying. most more more, um, more more people will be able, maybe more and more people will be able to see more of this of this reality um the the the, the energy is everywhere yeah um and it has a sound and it's it's we can create inside of it uh, but that's a whole other, like I said, it's fine. It, it's just, we've been kept in the dark. This is what I call, why I call this age the dark age. They tell us it's not the dark age. They tell us it's a highly advanced technology civilization that we've got here. And no, we're in a dark age. <laughs> we're absolutely in a dark age. Um, and there's, that's another thing to explore that's interesting is how we've been lied to about history. We not only have been lied to about our money, but we and our news, the history itself, has been we've been lied to about what our history actually is um and so that's that's another topic as well i've gone down a lot of these rabbit holes <laughs> so. love that so how can how can each of us um like how can each of us better equip ourselves to to assist in bringing bitcoin to the attention of of more people like what what would you mm. What would you say to, to people listening? Well, what's, what's something they could explore? I think one thing that's is good to explore, I mean, there's lots of things, obviously, but I'll give you my, my angle on it. And that is um, paying attention to when you get frustrated with others who aren't following along with it or don't like Bitcoin or even you know, like your, your girlfriend or your, your wife or, your, or whatever, or your spouse and your, or your children or your friends or your community, like, they don't want to listen to me or they're not quite getting on board or whatever. And um, it's important to pay attention to their resistance because it's actually your resistance. If it's a right. Mm. Um, I think it was Aristotle who said something about if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it. Go deeper into what Bitcoin is. Go really deep. And ask yourself, like, what are you, what is confusing you about it? And take it on as something to focus on and heal yourself with. Um, I do that all the time, like at work. Um, I work at a really large company and um, I had to work on a responsibility for a project that's quite large and involves a lot of people. And it's very hard sometimes to convince other people to do what you think needs to be done. And every time you get resistance, it's an opportunity to learn for yourself, like, well, where am I not being clear? What is blocking me? What don't I understand? Because I'm telling you, and you can just, you don't have to trust me, but you can trust Michael Saylor. The Bitcoin is here and it is already self-evidently um, a rope given to us as a gift to ourselves to get us out of this hole called miserable hole called fiat um, for our children and for humanity at large. 
And when you start to really grasp that at your heart, in your deepest heart, people will feel that in a really powerful way. That's why Michael Saylor is so able to like just get everybody so excited and they look to him to do that because it's not even what he says, his words, his energy is what is so powerful. Like, I don't know the guy, you know, who knows? He might, he might, I mean, I mean, what? I mean, I even like him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. He says one word on the internet and it's just like, Whoa. Right. But it's true. I can feel his energy, you know, on that. And when it comes to Bitcoin, yeah, um, that's where you have to look. So don't look at him as above you or that he knows something you don't know. Um, just, this is your journey. This is your opportunity to learn about yourself because not only will you learn about Bitcoin, that's not even the most important thing. Bitcoin will show you, give you the, the way to yourself and it enabled you to do the things that you thought were impossible, really impossible. Things that you were even scared of doing or you couldn't imagine yourself doing. Yeah. So. I'm thinking about how this is in, in a, in a smaller fractal, an example of, uh, of, I want to say humbling yourself for something, you know, like you, you, you are encountered, you encounter something you feel resistance to, but you decide to lean into it. And by doing that, you will, will reap a bigger reward than f following the resistance and not doing anything right. And someone like sailor. I'd say you see that he humbled himself and he's very honest about it, right? He, well, he famously has these old tweets, right? <laughs> where he dismisses and, you know, he puts himself up as the example of not getting it, not wanting to get it, having opinions without studying. And now it, it's different and he's following his understanding and his conviction. And I think that is my interpretation of what you're saying about like that is what you feel that that is a humble humble person and that seeing that someone else did that act is what is the inspiration i think yeah and his and his energy energy that radiates from a light bulb that's really super powerful the sun is a better example from a sun um everybody feels the sun right like everyone feels it and when you when you access that light within you Everyone else can feel that energy. And they don't necessarily have any conscious of that, that they're feeling it at all. They might think it's, I don't know, oh, I'm hot right now, <laughs> or whatever. You know, it's like they don't, yeah, yeah. they don't necessarily know what it's going to be. And some of them might even be afraid of it because they feel the light. And they're like, well, I don't want to be seen, so I'm going to run away, right? And, uh, you know, it, there's all different reactions to it. But we do all feel it, and we do radiate out. And every person, every human being radiates out their energy. And when you shake someone's hand, you're exchanging energy. When you're, you know, talking, conversing, we're exchanging energy. And that's the way it is. And, um, yeah, so it's a beautiful thing. And uh, it's always, it just be careful what you're pro projecting out into the world. Right? Frustration, impatience greed, whatever it is, you know, Bitcoin will give you an opportunity to do that. But until you believe it yourself and radiate that, you, the people around you are going to continue to be basically reminders because everyone's just a reflection to our, ourselves to remind us of what we haven't worked yeah. on, that they'll remind you that you're, you haven't really got it yet. Yeah. And that's the weird thing because it's like, yeah. oh my gosh. Like when, when you go through life and there's certain moments where it feels like everything's against you or people don't like you or they're not, whatever, and things seem really bad, it's done with love. It's always done with love, although you can't see it necessarily, but it is because you've got to listen mm -hmm. to that negativity. The negativity is just trying to help you chip away at the things keep your, that are keeping you from being who you are. You know, that's it. And it's weird because we're taught. I right? really, I couldn't agree yeah, more. Exactly. I, I really love that. Okay, that's that's the way it is. But in, yeah, in... I I love that. I I I just want to ask you, like, I am not. 
Yeah, we have a little lag. I hope I can fix that later in the recording. Um, I wanted to ask, like, I am not a believer of, you know, Bitcoin is inevitable. Like, I am a believer of what we just talked about, like the idea is there, it's mm -hmm. manifested, we're doing things. But, but because this is such a big battle, I, I don't dare to say, you know, Bitcoin is inevitable. I, I wonder what you think about that. But I also wanted to ask, like, can we still mess this up? Um, yes, by saying it's not inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You're right. And if we all collectively believe point. that, then it won't happen. I, I, I'm not, I know it's not the best answer, but this world is a paradox. And it's not meant to... It's, this world's not meant to be like a happily ever after story, right? We're supposed to learn about that. We are here to learn about manifestation. And why we're here to learn about manifestation well, it's because at the highest levels, we're creators. So we need to learn how to use all the energy and we need to know how to, to do it properly. Because uh, if we don't, we're not, we're going to really mess it up. But that's the answer. So it's like, you have to believe it. That's the train you're on. If you don't, then that's the train we're on. And you can manifest that. And I've seen this happen in my own life. Like I, for example, um, I had a, a friend, close friend, who was headed into a really bad place with drugs. And it was like, it was a done deal. And I even had a couple psychics look at it. And they're like, he is near death. He's going to die from drugs. And I, I don't, you know, when I go to other psych, my other psychic friends, you know, just to make sure, right? And I decided at one point, I'm like, I'm not going to believe it. It's not going to happen. And guess what? Like last week, he's, he's fine. He's doing great. So there's, mm. that's one example. I've done healing work. Like, and it started when I was a kid. I was diagnosed with, um, I've been diagnosed with, I don't want to go into my diseases, <laughs> if you don't mind. No. <laughs> and I decided, you don't have I think to. it was mononucleosis, that one. My, I was a kid and I was diagnosed with mononucleosis. I was, you know, the whole, all the symptoms and stuff. And then I remember I was sitting in my, my room and I'm like, I don't want to have this. I don't have this. I don't have, I didn't want to be sick. And the next day I got up, I was fine. Um, I have healed since I, like, I've healed my toe. I had, um, I was supposed to have surgery. The doctors wanted me to have surgery because it was like, and they said, I think it's arthritis, but it's not going to get better. You're going to have to wear a boot. You can't. And I'm like, nope, it's completely healed right now. Completely healed. And I was supposed to die from mm. cancer too. And so my point is that you can intentionally manifest what you want in the world um if you do it in a uh, from a pure heart that's it and when it comes to timelines because you're talking about yeah. major timelines like bitcoin and the financial direction of the world well as you know you know you, you gotta you gotta have a whole bunch of people wanting to bitcoin to be there you know either they're going to come because they want bitcoin or that's because they're afraid. It's at the very end and they're going to hop on board because, right, it's got so much momentum that if they don't, they're going to be left behind. So they'll get on. And that's the point where it can, it will manifest as our currency, you know, as the reserve currency, as the way we exchange energy on whatever level we do it, lightning or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. But if, if I don't believe it myself, I am going not going to contribute to that manifestation. So um, you need you need to choose within yourself whether you believe it or not. And if you're wishy washy about it, you're going to get a wishy washy result. <laughs> so, mm. You know, it's just gonna. I it, love that. No, it's. <laughs> I think. Yeah. No, I think I think it's it's uh, it's a really good reply actually to that question because. You just told me what I do believe, why I said, you know, I don't like to say it's inevitable. <laughs> it's a very reactional, ego-based analysis kind of, right? Like, well, 
if other people think it's inevitable and therefore they are complacent, you know, then it's not going to happen. But it's funny because that is kind of the negative part of that thought. Because if they think, you know, it is inevitable, it's going to happen. Right. And I'm acting in the way, in a way, you know, which is in alignment with it's going to happen, <laughs> then of course it's going to happen. You see, the happen, war is within each know? one of us. And that's why they, they trot out the, yeah. the Peter. Uh, who was it yesterday that was saying that, well, I don't think Bitcoin's going to be very successful because um, it's already reached its peak and. No, Peter Thiel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the media does this. They so at a very high level, um, they understand the duality of this world and how to manipulate the public with presenting two sides. They'll trot out the good, and then you it's it's inevitable every time. Good news, and then the bad news. Boom! And there's always this back and forth, and people in the Bitcoin world can watch. Oh, guys, good news! Bitcoin's going to go up, and then the next day you have something like that comment that just like shoots it down, but Dell's going to buy it. But Peter said this and there's this, and it creates all this like wavy, like instability. Right. And this is all by design to that. It, 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 it's created from within us. Right. When we listen to it and we start to doubt and then, and then this is, but this is the way the world has been run for like, as far as I've been alive on this lifetime, that the public has been manipulated with this kind of information. Again, it goes back to looking to someone else to give you the information about what you think you need to do, right? So, because you're looking at the news and you're like, well, I need to get some good news so that Bitcoin goes up and then I can be happy about Bitcoin. Then I'll get on board with it completely. I, I'll be, but see, that's kind of that, that's kind of like getting married to someone and being like, well, I'm not that sure, but today she seemed to love me. So, this is great. I'll get married. And, you know, if it shifts a little bit, I might not be so great on it. But the funny thing, you laugh, but it's funny that a lot of relationships are based on this kind of thing where it's like, well, you know, I'm kind of into it now. But, you know, and, and the whole relationship's about constantly trying to maintain the up. And then we go back to the other and it's just back and forth and back and forth. And it's like, well, OK, <laughs> but it, it doesn't ever fulfill in the end. It's, it's kind of disappointing. And then we kind of say, well, that's just normal. This is normal stuff because we listen to the psychologists and they tell us, well, that's normal in relationships. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> we, there's so many, there's so many, you. right? There's so many things in the world like fiat that are just there that we we've normalized to the point where it's like, but it's a dysfunction. So yeah, again, you just really do have to believe it. And even if you think you're crazy, you got to ignore everything going on up here, you know, cause you could save someone's life like literally by believing in them. You know, you've seen movies about it, right? Like other people believing in someone else and then they do all this stuff and they support them. And, you know, my dog, my dog almost died a couple of times. And uh, I believed that he would be healed. And I knew that had to because fear energy disempowers not just you, but everybody around you. It really causes a lot of bad health, negativity. And that is what, causes uh, causes failure to thrive um he's healed now he's doing so great it's a you could say a miracle because he was really having trouble in this life um and i can't emphasize that enough that's why sometimes i feel like my posts can be a little bit a little harsh maybe sometimes i feel maybe i i just know that but i just want I really want people to understand this. I really do. From the bottom of my heart, I, I want people to understand their power and that they can make a difference in the people's lives that they love. Their children, especially. Oh my gosh. Children are, they're sponges. Like everything you have, every fear, every negative thought, they feel all that. They take it on like, and they will embody that in their lives. They will, I think it was somebody posted something about young. Carl Jung, a quote saying that, that if you're a parent, you need to understand that you are the cause of your kids' neuroses. You know, I, I wouldn't say it like that, but, but it, they do take on everything. And so do your pets, you know, the pets take on everything. It's like, once you start to understand what the power we hold, you start to really look at the people around you and the animals and realize, wow, I am so privileged to be someone who can be a steward of their lives to take care of them 
wow, okay, well, I need to make some changes. Begin up here, negativity. If something you're passionate about, like Bitcoin, you need to know that you are just completely on board. Like this is going to happen, you know, and if it doesn't happen now, it's going to happen later. And it's, well, it will look at Ford, Ford saw it. Tesla saw it. I could even argue that Plato saw it, right? And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Well, okay. But you know, if we didn't keep coming back here and reincarnating to try to make it happen, then, why, why do we bother here? You know, it's like we can make it, we can make it happen. But if we let go of it needs to happen for me, then things, yeah. right? See, there's a difference. If, if I said, if I related to everything like, oh, it's got to happen for me in my experience, it's got to benefit me. Yeah, I'm going to be pretty disappointed, you know, because it may not in this lifetime. But you know what? It still is. I'm not having, am I, am I connected here? Because <laughs> I, uh, Hello. I have I hear a lot of lag, but I'm oh. I'm trusting in in the technology. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I uh, I didn't catch like I didn't catch like twenty percent twenty uh -huh. uh, the last twenty seconds, but I'm just trusting the technology here. Um, <laughs> I I don't know where you wanted to go, but I was thinking I don't know what the connection is doing. <laughs> and we are talking for 90 minutes, so I just wanted to ask okay. you the last okay, question, okay. and I hope it, co hope it comes true. Um, and I wonder if you have an answer to this, because I usually ask everyone the same question, and that is, uh, what is a core belief you will never let go? That everything is good. Everything is beautiful the way it's supposed to be. That's my core belief. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I love that. I think that's a, that's a great ending and, uh, to, to this conversation. I think you, uh, you made me reflect a lot. I, I love conversations like this. I didn't know where it was going to go, but I think <laughs> it was really nice and I hope you enjoyed it yeah, too. And, uh, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, check out some of my other episodes to learn why Bitcoin is the most important subject you must understand and adopt. If you want, you can follow and connect with me on Twitter X. I'm at Bram K. That's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you have any feedback or questions, just reach out. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for our next episode. Thanks for listening.